this. This is not good. This is what's left of my homemade weatherproof enclosure for my ESP and its power supply for my water pump. There's pieces of it everywhere. Now, that was supposed to be temporary, like a couple days, a couple weeks maybe. Uh, I actually, when I put it out here, I ordered a weatherproof enclosure that came in, you know, a few weeks later off, ordered off of eBay, costs under two dollars, and uh, I was lazy and never put it in. I, I knew that wasn't going to last. I was expecting water to get into it. I was not expecting it to completely dissolve. Um, but a while ago, I noticed because it's used to monitor my water pump in the ground over there and when it's running, I noticed it wasn't logging stuff anymore. Uh, so I came out here and it was a little more, I, I, I went to pick it up and it kind of crumbled like that. As you can see, I already took the ESP and the power supply out of it. Um, and uh, I haven't tested to see if they're both bad or just one is bad. I did coat the um, ESP8266 chip in a clear coat nail polish, uh, which I think is why it survived as long as it did. Um, but even it, it looks a little corroded now. Uh, but let's let's go have a look at uh, the enclosure that I did end up getting. Let's see, it's it's around here somewhere. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, not in there. Christmas lights I never opened. Power supplies, CDs, flash drives, extra, extra arcade controllers, and oh, there it is. There it is. Bring it over here where there's lights. So this, this little thing when I ordered it, I was uh, was not sure if it was going to be big enough. It was like a buck seventy-five ordered shipped to me on Amazon or not Amazon, eBay. Can't get stuff that cheap on Amazon, on eBay. And it took took a couple of weeks, probably a month or so to get here. Uh, so let's have a look inside. So I put the the uh, power converter in here and the ESP, uh, ESP chip. There's another ESP chip. I did not put any pins on it to make it easier to fit in there, so I didn't solder the pins on. I still need to solder the power supply on, uh, but it fits in there actually rather nicely uh, with plenty of space. Uh, and then it has these little rubber things with the, with the little hole where we poked in it and I fed the wires out and connect those two longer wires connected to the power supply and we should be good. It's supposed to be weatherproof. Definitely be better than the Tupperware container I had stuff in. But yeah, I didn't want to spend more than a couple of dollars on an enclosure considering the power supply and the ESP together cost like six bucks. So I'm glad I found this little, this little container uh, for, like I said, under two dollars and I actually recently ordered another one for the other pump which is currently in a Ziploc bag which is holding up better than uh, than the uh, Tupper, Tupper, Tupperware container. Ah, uh, out into the garage. Let's see. So here, here is the ESP chip that was out there. Let's see if I can get a little more light. That doesn't really help. Uh, and it's hard to tell because the light's kind of yellow. It does have corrosion on it. This might be okay because it's enclosed. I haven't tested them. I'll check them out. Not a huge loss. That's why I do things on the cheap. That and the fact that I have no clue what I'm doing and you shouldn't follow my lead. I don't know why you're watching this video. So for those of you, and I should have said this at the beginning of you, who don't know what I'm talking about, I did a video on this a while ago. Uh, you know, I have a water system at my house with two pumps, one in the ground, one in a tank, and I had the one in the ground um, accidentally because of a bad uh, bladder valve. Run and run and run and run until it burnt the motor out and it actually snapped off the pipe and broke. And that was about $1,000 to fix. And they sell rather expensive monitoring tools for these pumps, so I thought I would make my own for under $10. Uh, and with the enclosure now, we're at like the $8 mark, so I'm doing pretty good. And I have two, one of them I put in a Ziploc bag, and that one's still running, and I've ordered another enclosure, um, but that one's been running for months just fine. Uh, so the only problem with this one was, you know, the Ziploc, Rubbermaid Tupperware container. Actually, if I used Rubbermaid, it probably would have been okay. But the cheap Tupperware container I got didn't survive Florida heat and rain. But basically the way it works is the ESP chip, which is a cheap little microcontroller with Wi-Fi built in. Uh, you can get them, depending on what model you get, for a buck fifty to three bucks. The model I'm using is closer to three bucks. Uh, when it powers on, it pings, it is an HTTP request 
to my web server. It logs the time. That's all it does. Then it waits five minutes. And if it's still running after five minutes, and the pump should not be running anywhere close to that. It should be running more than a, a minute or two. Not, not even that um, at a time. If it runs for longer than, than five minutes, every minute it starts sending new requests, HTTP requests to the server, hitting up a different URL, which not only logs it as an alert, but texts me uh, that the pump is running. So now, all I have to do is um, download the code I've already created, make sure that I put in my Wi-Fi um, uh, SSID and proper password, and make sure I have it pointing at the proper URL with security codes, upload that code to the ESP, and we should be good to go. If you want a copy of the code, check out the links in the description of this video, or go to my GitLab page, uh, gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000, search for my project called Hardware, and under there there's a folder called Water, or actually in there there's a folder called ESPA266, and under there there's a folder called Water Switch, and there's a single file in there, uh, and you just have to, again, put in your uh, access point ID, your, your, the SI, SID of your access point, its passphrase, and the URLs you want to link to. After modifying the code, hook up your USB, upload the code, compile and upload your code, and you're good to go. Again, this is a quick review, so I'm not going into detail because I've gone all over this in previous videos, setting up uh, your Arduino IDE to work with an ESPA266 and this code and where to get it. So be sure to check out previous videos on this channel for more detail. I have uploaded the code and now I'm letting it run. Uh, the first ping has already happened and I'm just waiting a few minutes to see if the alerts go through before I uh, solder the power supply to it. I just got a text. And sure enough, I got a text notifying me that the pump has been running. I actually modified it. I thought about it. five minutes seems too long, so I set it to uh, two and a half minutes. So after two and a half minutes, it starts texting me every minute, letting me know the pump is running, so that I can, uh, you know, get it shut off if, if for some reason it is running, and not cost me a thousand dollars and a day or two without water in my house. So this little power supply is supposed to take the, uh, I believe, 240 volts coming out of the wall for the pump and dropping it down to 5 volts for the ESP. Uh, but there's no markings on this, so I just want to make sure there's different models. I want to make sure they sent me the right one before I put the ESP up to it. So let's grab our multimeter and go check that out. I don't think I can stress enough that I don't really know what I'm doing. So don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing, okay? Let's give this a try. First things first, let's unplug the pump so we don't electrocute ourselves. And let's clear away. There we go. Let's see. Hopefully you can see that. 5.2 volts. We're good. By the way, I didn't record it, but after hooking everything up, I plugged it back in. Ah, that's why I'm getting power. Uh, I'm gonna unplug it now, take that off, go solder it to the board, bring it back out, and we should be good to go. There we go, cover on, and we should be good to go hook this up. So again, the power's unplugged, and I also want to remind you, I said in the last video, this little junction box originally controlled the pump. It doesn't anymore, it's just an enclosure now. We disconnected that, and the dip in the tank, a uh, little valve, or not valve, but sensor in the tank, turns it on and off by completing the connection here. So uh, I actually picked up a uh, new nut, because some of these nuts look kind of old. I'm gonna hook this up now. That's on secure, let's plug it back in. Hope there's no flames. Okay, so right now there should be no power going to the ESP chip. It flips on when the connection is completed by a, this little sensor here. When the water drops, can you see that? When the water drops, that goes down, completes the connection. It is currently 11.17 a.m. October 2nd. If my server has the same time, let's turn this on and see if we get a good seal. 11.18, perfect. Go ahead and open this up. Uh, go. Once the water drops enough, that switch should kick on. We'll hear the water spraying, and that should allow the ESP to turn on and connect to my Wi-Fi. Dumping, 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 dumping. Okay, you can hear the water running. The ESP ship should be on. 
Just give it a couple of seconds to um, connect to the Wi-Fi. I can turn this off because it's going to take a moment for it to fill up. So it should be running, connecting my Wi-Fi and sending a signal to my server. We'll go inside now. Fingers crossed. It got a signal to my router and connected and sent that signal. And we should see something for October 2nd around 1118. That way, if you enjoy my videos, be sure to check out the rest of them on my channel. But also, second, check out my second channel. Actually, it's my first channel. This is my second channel. Uh, but if you go to filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. There you can search through all my videos from this channel and that channel in one place. You can also support me over at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Okay, on my server, gonna run the pump command. List out all the dates here. And down here at the bottom, we have today's date, the time, and it's not an alert. The alerts were the tests I did before I brought it out there. So there we go. I didn't electrocute myself today, and that is a good thing. Be safe when working with uh, power like this. Only do things if you know what you're doing. I thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Think about supporting me over on Patreon. Check out all my videos over at filmsbychris.com. And I hope that you have a great day.